Okay, welcome back. Captain Ron here. Uh, today we're going to discuss a, a, a serious problem that we have with, with the gyroplanes uh, causing a lot of accidents and it's uh, rotor blade flap on your very first takeoff when you when you're required to pre-spin the blades up and I'd like to demonstrate illustrate here a couple of the situations to call like the danger zones that you can get in trouble on takeoff. Now on your very first takeoff you, uh, you obviously have to pre-rotate the blades to the manufacturer's recommendations as far as RPMs go. <clears throat> okay and it's usually depicted on your rotor tachometer instrument as the green zone. So okay the first uh, zone, uh, danger zone you can get into is not pre-rotating enough RPM before you move the cyclic back, add power for takeoff. Now you're, you're, <clears throat> you're getting a lot of airspeed through the rotor blades and they're tilted all the way back. So if they're not spinning fast enough, they don't have enough centrifugal force to maintain their stiffness. And they're, and then in slow motion what happens, <clears throat> this advancing blade, that's the blade going in the same direction you're going, comes around and meets this, all this airspeed, flaps it up. The blade that's going backwards, obviously it's a tiering system, it flaps down. So every revolution it keeps flapping up and down, up and down, and you'll feel a, a vibration in the cyclic. So to Immediately, you want to push the cyclic forward, pull the throttle back. So that's the first danger zone in rotor blade flap on takeoff. So let you, let's say you've, uh, you pre-spin the blades up to the green zone in your rotor tachometer, and they're spinning fast enough, the stick is always forward to spin them up. Now, you're ready to release the mechanical pre-rotator and when you first do that, move the cyclic back and add power. As soon as you move the cyclic back, the rotor disc is going to start slowing down because it, at the moment you don't have any airspeed coming in unless you have a lot of headwind. So the rotors might stay where they're at or slow down and you slowly nurse the throttle in and bring these rotor blades up to a higher RPM. You pre-rotate it, all its function is to get the blade started. Then you have to continue its rotor blade increase with the throttle going down the runway as you get airspeed in. Now, at some point in time on your initial roll for takeoff, you can't leave the cyclic all the way back. If you do, the machine's going to tilt back, get in the air on the backside of the power curve. So to avoid that, as you're going down the road uh, on the runway, you push the cyclic forward a little bit, flatten the disc out, reduce the drag, get airspeed and ground speed. And it's recommended you don't want to push the cyclic too far forward because now the nose is on the ground and you've got an area here where the cyclic is doesn't give you any feedback. You don't know where you're at and you've got the disc too flat, too much speed, rotor blades aren't spinning up like they should, then the pilot recognizes, pulls the stick back, flaps the blades, and tips over. So that's the, the second zone where you can get into trouble. <clears throat> so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go out in the aircraft and demonstrate these two problems that we have. One, initially pre-spinning the rotor blades up, and two, uh, moving the cyclic too far forward as you roll down the runway trying to get airspeed for takeoff. Let's go fly. Okay, we're going to hopefully demonstrate what we uh, just finished illustrating to you about rotor blade management on, uh, on your first takeoff. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when you train with a flight instructor, you uh, just pre-rotate that one time 
for whatever, however long you're going to be flying. So most students don't get enough uh, training in, in first takeoffs. Uh, generally, the practice is, at least the practice I use, is once I feel the student is prepared for solo flight, uh, we'll do approximately two hours of nothing but first takeoffs, fly the runway, land, stop every stop your rotor blades, taxi back. Uh, this this will get you quite used to the uh, systems of whatever aircraft airplane you're flying. And there's just been a lot of accidents and they continue. Uh, always uh, the number one Accident is, is caused by rotor blade flap on takeoff. Now you can uh, you can get rotor blade flap if you if you taxi with a rotor blade spinning. Uh, I don't teach that, and some people spin the pre rotate at the whole short line uh, because they don't want to sit out on the center line of the runway. Uh, I guess they're afraid somebody's going to, another aircraft's going to overtake them, but that's generally not the case. If, for instance, if you're sitting at the whole short line like we are right now, and, and we've got a good... Traffic over at 225 Charlie, final runway one, Cersei. And we have a, a good wind down the runway, it's a crosswind to me right now. So if I pre-spin my rotor blades and and then start taxiing and for some reason uh, tilt the cyclic downwind, in this case the wind's coming from our right, so I would accidentally, inadvertently tip the cyclic to the left. Now the wind is underneath your rotor disc and it's going to tip you over if the wind is strong enough and your rotor blades are spinning. Uh, probably 125 or whatever, 150. And we're waiting on an aircraft at the moment. So I'm going to illustrate or uh, demonstrate to you the two places where you can get rotor blade flat. Now just because when you pre-rotate with whatever mechanical means you have to pre-rotate in, in that specific gyroplane, up to the recommended, the manufacturer's recommended uh, minimum rotor RPM for takeoff to, to start your rolling takeoff. Now, once you get the blades up to speed and they become into the green area on your rotor RPM, which is safe to fly or continue power inputs, uh, that's one place you can get rotor blade flat if you don't spin them up into the green area before you start your roll down the runway. Now, once you complete that, that doesn't mean you're out of the safety zone because at one point in time, you've got to push the cyclic forward to get airspeed. And, and if, you, if you move the cyclic forward too much, you're gonna flatten the rotor disc out. Your rotor blades aren't gonna continue to spin up and you're going to get a lot of ground speed, air speed, and that's what happens uh, on the on a rotor blade flap. They move the cyclic back too quick after being forward too much. Okay, here we go. Cherokee traffic, uh, yellow gyro plane lining up waiting for departure, zero one, Cherokee. Uh, this is not an easy video because I have to be careful how I demonstrate this to you because I, I can't demonstrate reality otherwise I'd be a victim of rotor blade flap on takeoff. Okay, we're going to go through the checklist here. There's traffic. Oh, bad 225 track. Charlie, we're turning left down one runway one. Percy. All right, we'll get our blades spun up.
All right, we're going to go up the, in this case, uh, 225 RPM. Okay, stick comes all the way back and leave it back centered. And now, first thing you're going to see is your rotor blade is going to reduce an RPM so you can get some power in, get some movement down the runway. Okay, now at this point, we're at about 300 RPM on the rotor. Now, if you move, if you don't move the stick forward like I got it back, you're not going to get any airspeed, enough airspeed to get takeoff. So I'm going to lower the nose and push this, move the stick forward just a little bit. Okay, that's going to give me. Now, if I, for instance, lower it too much and put the nose on the ground. I don't know where I'm at, and I'm just keep getting faster and faster, and the blades aren't coming up. Right now they're at 300 RPM, and I'm doing 40 miles an hour on the ground. The blade should be up higher than that because I had the disc too flat. So I'm going to move the cyclic back, and it's best to keep the nose just bumping the ground if you have to, and add power. Add power and then you take leave the ground, take off, level off, and you're safe. But that's very critical, those two the two parts in the rotor blade management on takeoff. Yeah, once, once the pilot recognizes he's moved the cyclic forward too far, at that point in time, it's uh, you better abort the takeoff. But what they generally do is they say, well, I need to move the cyclic back. So they immediately pull the cyclic all the way back, and the blades aren't used to that, that angle of attack, a sudden angle of attack for the rotor blades. Therefore, you get rotor blade flap. Rotor blade flap uh, just chops the propeller, the tail, and eventually rolls you over. All right, I'm going to stop everything. And we'll taxi back, and I'll do it one more time for you. Yep, remember. Taxi in, you want your rotor blades stopped. So we'll stop here. And we'll energize in this system. It's all pneumatic. You pull the trim button back. And it's, it's quite an effective rotor brake. And if you've got a strong crosswind, you want to tilt the cyclic into the wind as the rotor blades stop. Okay. Now remember, when you, when you get your flight training, uh, you shouldn't have to encourage the CFI to, to put more emphasis on the uh, initial takeoff initial takeoff but you may want to make sure you get enough of that to feel comfortable and to learn all the systems that are associated with that specific gyroplane now you got you you know some gyroplanes the earlier models of the single place this the earlier model gyroplanes and still some out there today the single places generally before the European uh, gyroplanes came up, came on the market but those uh, the pre-rotators are, are usually maximum probably 125 RPM and obviously that's not enough RPM to to take off with so you're taught it's the only way you can fly you're taught to gradually feed the power in and, and kind of glance at the road attack occasionally and, and nurse those 
rotor blades up to speed up to into the green zone until and you'll notice the the nozzle you'll feel back pressure on Thank the cycling and and that's another thing I I I should have mentioned and we'll do that on our next takeoff is you want to always feel a little braking force on the rotor system you know oh, like a little bit of forward come back a little bit just kind of keep it in that neutral area this is uh, uh, after you pre-spin release the brakes stick all the way back in the center then you would gradually feed power in to continue to get the rotor blades up to speed as, as soon as you release the mechanical pre-rotator and move the cyclic back your rotor blades are going to slow down immediately because you don't you don't have any airspeed through the rotor blades to to spin them up uh, and one condition if you have a a strong wind in your face like 15 to 20 miles an hour wind then when you move the cyclic back after pre-rotation you can just sit there and the blades will come up to speed by their own because you already have airspeed you don't need ground speed because of the wind and most of these European gyroplanes this is the uh, auto gyro MPO Sport uh, they, they pre-spin up this will come up to 325 but that's called a, a performance takeoff and uh, a new pilot should avoid that uh, until that person gets enough time experience uh, just flying standard takeoff and generally the high performance takeoff at a high RPM max rotor RPM is generally used uh, to take off out of a short field and uh, it's best to stay away from the short fields when you're first learning uh, you know you want plenty of runway because your your proficiency is not going to be good uh, you're a new pilot there's a lot of mental and physical uh, multitasking going on especially on the first takeoff you know, you got rotor blades to contend with, you got the rudder, the cyclic, the throttle, everything has, has to be in harmony. You gotta, gotta work them all together and not only physically move these controls, but you have to mentally, you know, think about everything you're doing. So it's, it's a, you gotta pay attention and stay focused on the first takeoff. beautiful day out here today I wish we had a little more wind down the runway where I could uh, slow things down and uh, but we'll do another one and hopefully we'll cover all the important details I do have a video out about uh, a coordination between the rudder nose wheel and cyclic you may want to watch that one. It's, it, it does explain uh, and demonstrate, illustrate the coordination on takeoff with a cyclic position. Okay, you look clear. There's only one, one other aircraft in the pattern. I think he's landed already, so we're good. Searchy traffic, uh, yellow jar plane lining up, waiting for departure on 01. Searchy. Now, uh, when you're out on the center line of the runway, it's your runway. Don't don't worry about somebody running into you. You always check traffic before you go out. Uh, you look. Some airplanes don't have a radio, so you have to look and listen. Kind of like crossing a railroad track. Okay, and get out on the center. You know, some of these, uh, some people say, well, you know, I want to pre-rotate before I go out on the runway because I'm afraid I don't want to stay out there too long. Uh, you're flying the aircraft, you're, you're pilot in command, you got the runway at this point. Okay? Alright, we're going to pre-spin the blades.
And we'll go up to 225 RPM. That puts me just in the beginning of the green on the road RPM. No wind today, so I'm not going to get any help there. All right, here we go. Now, when I move the cyclic back, yeah, the rotors are maintaining. I'm going to just give a little throttle. Stick is all the way back. You want that nose to become light. You don't want to push that cyclic forward yet. And you don't want to push it forward. You just ease it forward. Okay. Now, now the nose is off the ground. I'm a little high. Now, if I go forward just a tad, see, it's almost a feel thing. Just a little bit to get airspeed. Okay? And that'll allow my rotor blades to come up to speed. Now they're 300. And I'll add a little more power. And see, we're already in the air at 325 RPM on the rotor. So, the main thing is, keep the nose off the ground a little. You may want to bump it just to know where you're at in the cyclic movement forward and aft. All right, thank you. Appreciate you watching, and uh, see you next time.